Hello everybody, this is Gregory with The Cinema Rag. I hope you're doing well today. Today we're going to continue the series Sexy Saturday and talk about Emmy Rossum. Now before we begin, if you like podcasts, The Cinema Rag of course started as a podcast. So go to Apple and Spotify and check out the first 200 episodes as they're being moved over here. Also, I have a weight loss channel at YouTube called Permanent Weight Loss Made Easy. So if you're having trouble keeping your weight off because 80% of people who lose more than 50 pounds will, reg will regain it. Go check out that series. There's probably about 200 videos over there because I was once overweight and I've kept it off. All right, so today we're gonna talk about Emmy Rossum. Some of you might not be familiar with the name, but you might be familiar with the face. She's probably most famous for being on television on the show Shameless, which she did for several years, which was on Showtime. But she did have a pretty distinguished movie career uh, before she started having kids. The series, of course, is called Sexy Saturday because when these were released on the podcast, it was on Saturdays. So it's, it's a series where I gush over women that I find attractive. And it's no different than if a woman talked about various male actors that she found attractive. So Emmy Rossum definitely fits the, the type that I like. Fresh face, pale skin, life, slender figure, ingenue look. And she had an interesting childhood. Uh, she, her parents broke up when she was an infant. So she was raised by her mother. She's half Jewish and half kind of English stock from her father. She's admitted she's only seen her father twice in her lifetime, which is quite sad. And you would think, given that she's famous, the father would show up and be like, hey, I want to be in your life, right? That's like a movie, that's a movie plot point. But no, um, she was seen as being pretty gifted with singing. So she was signed up for the Met Opera at a very young age. And that caught the attention eventually of the makers of Phantom of the Opera. Now, before Phantom of the Opera came out, which is probably her big movie breakout role, she did some movies before that, most notably Mystic River, which was the movie that uh, Sean Penn got an Academy Award. She actually plays the daughter that is murdered at the beginning of the movie of Sean Penn. And so Sean Penn, of course, the rest of the, the movie is all about, about that kind of plot point. It's a sad movie. It's not a movie that you typically go back to. It's like a well-made movie, but you know, it's got Tim Robbins, got other people in it, but it's, it's a sad movie. It was her big breakout is Phantom of the Opera opposite Gerard Butler. We have a recent video here how Gerard Butler is the A-level star of B-list movies. You know, it's just like he's he's he he has a career, he's talented, he's handsome, and, and you think about it, he's got such a wide range of talent. He can do singing like this, and then he can be in 300 and rom-coms and, and and Den of Thieves and things like that. But she got this movie when she was very young. She was only like 18 or 19 when she was cast in this movie, and she does the actual singing. So if you go to the soundtrack. Um, you can actually hear her voice singing. And I think this is where I, she first caught my attention. And I just was just struck by her beauty. Just because, again, she's got the ingenue beauty. And the ingenue is what I like. And she literally is, for all intents and purposes, an ingenue. If you, if you talk about, like, from an opera standpoint, she's the ingenue. So from there, um, this is when she goes kind of on her, I, you know, it, I wouldn't necessarily call it an imperial run. But it's probably the most imperial run for her. Uh, so she does Poseidon, which is the Wolfgang Peterson remake of the Poseidon Adventure with Gene Hackman. The original was great. Ernest Borgnine. I mean, it's just a great movie. Uh, they redid this one, and this movie's not that good. I mean, the plot's great. They should redo it again and just have a better director do it. But she was in that movie playing the young girl. And then she's in Dragon Ball Evolution in 2009. Again, nothing special there. And, and she's in a movie called Inside in 2011. Then she gets, gets big with Beautiful Creatures in 2013. That was kind of a movie that had a little heat at the time. And during this time, she starts to do um, Shameless. So Shameless, she plays Fiona Gallagher. William H. Macy is the, the head of this family, and he's kind of a boorish drunk. And she's one of the kids. Also, who came out of this show was the guy who's on the, the Hulu FX show, The Bear. Uh, right now, so he's one of the kids from that show as well, but she plays the oldest sister Later on she comes back in terms of her movies not much 2014 before I disappear Comet you're not you 2018 she does a futile and step stupid gesture. This is on Netflix last I checked This is a movie about the creation of National Lampoon and it's played by I want to say Will Forte plays the guy who created National Lampoon the magazine uh, during the 70s and later, the enterprise that created classic movies like Animal House and Vacation and, and whatnot. And so she's in that movie as his love interest. And really that's about it in terms of her film career. If you look at television, as I mentioned, she's most notable for, for, for doing Shameless. And then most recently she did a show called Angeline, 
where she plays a title character, and that was produced by her husband, who we'll talk about in a second. And then she did The Crowded Room, uh, which is a show that's currently out that has another Sexy Saturday, my girl, Amanda Seyfried. So I got two Sexy Saturdays in one show. I'm like, in terms of her personal life, she's been with Sam Ismail for quite some time. He's a producer and creator. He's probably most famous for um, the the television show with Rami Malek. Uh, I can't remember. It's, it's it's off the top of my head. I am not. not I am Legend. I am Robot. I Robot. I Robot. And he's also done some movies. And so he is co-producing her her television show Angeline. And they got together about ten years ago. And uh, they have two children, and they had their children like post COVID in secret. In fact, her child that was born this year, she just after it's like it was like several days, if not more times. She's like, "Oh yeah, I had a kid yesterday." Yeah. So she has two kids. Again, she's thirty seven. And in closing, look, where where do I think her career is going to go? I think most people aren't going to remember her for her film career. I think she's going to be remembered for Phantom, maybe, uh, especially with the musical geeks, and then for for Shameless. I just think she's lovely. I mean, she almost has that Julia Roberts face. Like when she smiles, her whole face just kind of lights up. She's just got a great smile. And just the small the small chin, the high cheekbones. And just, just a beautiful, lovely, uh, I, I think I would say a very expressive face. And she has a, a nice figure even after the two kids. And I just think she's quite lovely. And she just kind of fits that, that, that mold that I like. In terms of her future career, it's probably going to be in television, uh, just here and there. She has two very young kids, and uh, but I think there'll always be a place for her on television. And movies, probably not. Maybe, you know, it helps kind of like ask Leslie Mann. It helps when your husband is a producer of Hollywood content because he can put you in stuff. So maybe he'll put her... He will put her in some some films that he creates or co-creates or some television. But either way, I wish Emmy Russell the best. You're always going to be that fresh face ingenue from Phantom of the Opera, and I think you're great. Guys, post in the comments. Let me know what you think of Emmy Rossum, her career, or her looks. I'd like to hear from you. Until next time, take care. God bless and pray.